Well, we arrived in Wayne, and let me tell you, this small Nebraska town hit it out of the park hosting the first ever Mayday Stole. Huge thanks to the sponsors, the Max, the Fourth Jug, Grossenberg, Sap Brothers, Porsche, Landmark, AOPA, Olson, Samson Construction. It was such a great time. Here's two of the legends, Hal Stockman, Steve Henry. New friends were made, old friends were reunited, and it was an absolute great event. Thursday started with FAA required academics that was going to get everybody accredited for Stoll Drag Racing nationwide. So a little bit of time in the hangar doing academics and I was out to the flight line looking at the race course. Good morning to everybody. Uh, it is, it's Wednesday morning. We're doing the safety walk down the course. And let me tell you, Kevin Quinn and Kyle and all the boys, Johnny Walker and Brian, who are putting on this event, they've got some big hurdles here. Uh, some construction that was supposed to be completed is not, which has created some safety hazards, which have to get addressed. And uh, we've had a lot of rain, so the dirt is quite soft. We're waiting for that to dry out. As we walk through it right now, it's building up on the heels of your shoes a couple inches. So everything's, uh, all today's flying right now is kind of on hold. But uh, it's going to be a difficult course. It uh, Part of it, it's nice and smooth and straight. And then down on this end, it definitely has some, some character to it. Let's put it that way. It slopes, variety of terrain, uh, some bumps, some ups and downs, different grass types, different grass heights, different grass thicknesses. So it's going to be an interesting weekend. Concerned about flexing that firewall and all that stuff. And so walk this course and think about what airplane you're in and how it affects you. Follow the golf cart down. We'll lead you over into the corner. Um, and we're just going to basically go. When we turn, we'll all face, you know, walk the course together. We're going to go one. We'll space it out. Due to the winds and the construction that was still being conducted on the racing runway, when we kicked off the practice day, we were actually reutilizing the cross grass runway. The dirt, what, the, what we have, we have that dirt problem. They're trying to work on that. They're going great guns to work on that. Um. It's always a blast watching Austin fly his Husky with that reversible MT propeller. This young man is a heck of a pilot. C.C. Pocock was really enjoying the 15 to 25 mile an hour headwinds. His experimental Cessna 170 with leading edge slats is an absolute dream to watch fly. He is so good with it. Friday we woke up to clear skies, a little bit of wind, but we were able to practice on the race course for the first time. We would send out an entire class or heat of four or five airplanes, we'd come back in, shut down, we'd debrief, talk about it, and get everybody else ready to go on the next one. It was a nice slow walk before run learning process. Are you are you in heaven there, Dakota?
This is my Air Force pilot training buddy, Chris Stokes. Thrift and I go way back. He lives down in Lincoln, Nebraska, has a beautiful Stearman and a Bonanza. And it was great to get to spend the weekend with him. I think he might have some dog snacks in his pocket. Reaches into his bed right here. Yeah. Here, carry yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> like, kind of mandatory. Dakota, there. do you have two new girlfriends? You see a bear shooting. You slut. Like, like, she's, she's got you. She got you collared already. Dakota even won over the food truck operators. I looked over, he was sitting at the tailgate. I yelled at him, and she's like, Oh no, we invited him over. We got some food for him. He was a happy dog. You won him over. You don't know what's coming, but you know you like it, huh, buddy? It smells good, huh? It smells good. You're a good boy if you are. So the mailman, the UPS man, and the FedEx man all heal. If he sits outside the door this way, they give him a treat. Yeah, he's been quite trained. Short work, huh? Oh, was that good? <laughs> My first heat was racing Jeff in his experimental 0470 powered Cessna 175. Of course, he out accelerated me down the line, but where I really lost the race was in the turnaround. Ended up about a second and a half behind at the end. Between heats, I would have to bounce back and forth between flying the airplane and getting back on the microphone. There was times I was actually on the microphone in the airplane narrating, waiting for my next race. The second heat was going to take a Kit Fox that was lighter but less horsepower than me being flown by a rookie race pilot against my 170. As it turned out, a little bit of experience and a little bit of horsepower worked both to my favor and I was able to easily win that heat. So as the third heat came up, I had one win, one loss. It was a double elimination contest. I was racing Kathy Page in her Clipper. She's a Reno veteran. She beat me to the end. We were close coming back but she ended up scratching on her landing on the far end. I don't know if she just made a flying mistake or she thought she had to push that aggressive to try to beat me, but in the end, I was victorious. That was a nice little surprise. My fourth race was going to be a re-race against the Beast. I got the lane of choice on the right side, which I preferred, had a much better turnaround, good acceleration, and ended up winning this race by less than a second. When the tail hit the ground, I looked over and Jeff's tail was just touching down. That was a fun competition between the two of us. Now, mind you, I've raced at High Sierra Flying, but that was on the long course and at high density altitude, and I was never competitive. I don't think I have ever won a Stoll Drag heat. And so at this point, I was going to be racing CC for third place. So I knew, even if I lost to CC, I was going to be on the podium. So I was pretty dang happy at this point. I also knew CC was going to be a real challenge. He's one of the best 170 pilots in the world, if not the best. He's popping 100 horsepower in nitrous, a highly modified airplane. So I knew it was going to be a very, very tall order to have a chance to beat him. 
He out accelerated off the line, but we were pretty close at the end. Here we're both lifting off, coming back. And as we got closer, I was within reach. If he possibly scratched, had a bounce on his landing, I might have a chance. In the end, he didn't, and he rarely does. But I was very pleased as you see this final picture of getting the shutdown within about a second, second and a half. Dakota was cheering me on the whole way, and Bob was pleased with how the day's racing had gone. And even more pleased to have taken third place in the bronze division. Took him into Dead Cow onto this six mile long dry lake bed, and Johnny Walker landed there for the first time. And the next thing you know, he's inserting himself in every sing single thing that he can think of. And Johnny Walker's, I mean, literally got a right and a left hand man, literally, and I can't thank you enough, buddy. Brian Forsyth, he's our lead timer. I live in Squaw Valley, Lake Tahoe, my whole other life, skiing, ski racing, all that kind of stuff with my kids. Brian was like, when are we can get some timing going at this fly-in, we can start keeping track of times, and we can start getting... Huge congrats to Colin Keneva and the Old Green Plain for a successful first year of Stoll Drag Racing. Congrats also to the champions of all three divisions, all the winners, and it was just so much fun competing. We made new friends, saw old friends, cannot wait to be back to Mayday Stoll in Wayne, Nebraska in 2022.